G'day folks. Well, I found another DC motor in the bin at work today. Uh, this one here is in much worse shape than the last one I've restored. This one actually did go for a swim. It's been immersed in water for oh, several months, I'd say. They dropped an appliance in the uh, swimming pool and weren't able to get it out simply because it was too heavy. And I think they left it there for the whole season. So naturally the motor, the variable speed DC controller, pretty much everything was trashed by the time it came back to us for refurbishment. Uh, this is the motor which ended up in the rubbish because it's just too rusted up and um, well, put it this way, if you're a company and you're refurbishing something, you don't try and rebuild the motor that's been underwater for the last six months. But I'm going to try and restore it myself. I don't care how long it lasts. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Okay, well, I know this probably isn't recommended, but I just figure I'll try and put some power to it and see what it does. I can't, won't run it very long. This motor's made by Drive Systems in Milano, Italy, and it's rated at 600 watts. It's pretty decent. Down that in there. Ooh. The brushes are sparking a bit, but she does want to work. Right, just cleaning all the oxide and shit off the com bars. Right, now it's stopped. I think the brushes are stuck and just burnt all the crap off. Oh well, it will work again. Okay, I've definitely got a lot of rust inside it. Three bolts aren't too bad. The bearings can be shot. Rotor's well well enamelled, so I don't think that will be a problem. Just a matter of cleaning the rust off everything and putting new bearings in it. Polish the com bars. The brushes are almost new, they're still right up the back here. So a bit of luck they'll hang in there. I don't know what the uh, water has done to them. If they've been damaged by the chlorine content or salt content, whatever was in the pool water, then, well, yeah, I'll need to buy some new brushes. Definitely a lot of rust in there. I'll polish that off on the lathe. Same with the com bars. Clean all that oxidey crap off it. Enamel wise it looks intact. Brush is definitely stuck, which is why it stopped before. That one there moves. The carbon doesn't appear to have gone soft or broken down from the water, so I'll be reuse reuse these brushes inside housing, just a fine wire brush, give it a good wipe out, get all the crap off the magnets and everything else just gets a light wash. So I'll order some bearings for that tomorrow and we'll chuck it back together again. Ok, I've got most parts ready for assembly tomorrow. Have to get the bearings and polish that up and that'll do it. Brushes are good soldered some of the connections and things up. Ok, I'll give the armature a rough polish. Looking much better already. That's more than enough for the iron segments. Com bars need a finer polish. I've used a bit of a glass paper to take the majority of the crap off it. Bearing I'm going to have trouble getting off. But it will come off. Everything else seems fine. Must be for balancing I guess. A bit green epoxy putty. <laughs> oh yeah, if you're going to do this on a lathe, don't forget to put something over the bedways. That dust's really abrasive and nasty. The last thing you want is for it to do that sort of damage to your bed. This lathe's been used for all sorts of things and nobody took care of it, so she's had it. But I'm not going to make it any worse by getting sanding dust and other crap on it. So yeah, I'm going to polish this with a bit of brass so and leather. And that should do it. Get some bearings onto it. Try and get this bearing off.
those are some nice looking combars. I know Brasso can be a little bit corrosive when it's left on the product so I just run a knife blade gently down between each bar. I'm not a big fan of undercutting mica or anything unless it's standing proud and causing the brushes to bounce. Uh, have a quick spray with silicon spray and a good blow of compressed air down each slot and that forced out most of the crap. Just got to wash all the Brasso and other abrasive shit out of there. These ones here are so there's vir virtually no wear on them so there's no point in trying to undercut or clean out the mica. I'm not a big fan of undercutting mica unless it stands proud from the copper. Uh, yeah, it's not a problem. If it is standing proud, the brushes will bounce and burn holes in the combars. If there's too much undercut on some motors, like with soft brushes and deep grooves, these grooves can fill with carbon and become conductive and you get an arc over. You'll see a bright arc go over the combars as the rotor is turning. So, it's just a personal preference as far as I'm concerned. I don't have any problem with undercutting on some motors and not undercutting on some others. If this was a 240 volt AC rotor I certainly wouldn't undercut it unless the mica was very hard and causing the brown brushes to bounce. Okay well that's pretty much all I can do today. I've got to buy some new bearings. They're an off the shelf metric size bearings. I think there's roughly a 16mm bore, 23mm out or 30 mil out of housing. That one there is probably 12 mil bore, 25 mil out of housing. Uh, brushes are fine. Everything else is fine for assembly. Uh, trick's going to be getting this bearing off because neither one of my pullers are small enough to fit in behind it and pull it off. So I think I'll just take it to a local electric motor shop. I know the owner fairly well so Probably won't cost me anything to get that bearing off. It's a press fit, so I don't want to try and pry it against anything and damage the combars or something like that. It's easier just to take it to a professional and get it pulled with a proper machine or pressed off. So yeah, that pretty much concludes today's work. Thanks for watching.